Hello everybody, Panzanator here, back with Hearts of Iron 4. Um, this is our first Together for Victory um, uh, campaign that we're going to do. And we are going to play um, <laughs> good old, wait, let's go back, good old Soviet Union campaign. That was, that was doomed from the start because I'm not that good with the Soviets. And, you know, going away for four weeks for Christmas break having the series straddle that like that just wasn't the best of ideas so um you know we can pick any of the commonwealth countries would be interesting even the uk would be you know more interesting than usual however we're gonna go with the dominion of canada um we're gonna go with canada because so i uh, praetorian hijinks who is um a role model for Hearts of Iron 4 campaigns. I don't know if that's the right word, if I'm saying that right. Uh, basically, I watched his campaigns, figured out what to do, uh, learned how to play the game from his tutorials, and uh, watched his Let's Plays. He has played all this Australia, um, staying in the Commonwealth, and it's interesting. It's just kind of slow, and you know, I've watched that. Probably some of you have watched that. It's just not exactly what I want to do. Um, similar situation for South Africa. Drew Durnell uh Durnell, I don't know uh crack lord formerly ba start gaming uh he did a campaign as fascist south africa and kind of took away the british colonies i don't know his hearts of iron uh campaigns are not his channel strong suit and then the raj i mean and new zealand just don't see interesting new zealand actually i mean correction new zealand and the raj seem very interesting like the bob simple would be fun it's just i don't think it'd be useful because I don't know. Basically, my uh, what I'm trying to get at is Canada seems like the Commonwealth country, the country that was updated and together for victory. That seems like it'd be the most interesting one to play on your own, um, solo, single player, because you can um, affect the war a lot easier. So Australia, New Zealand, you're stuck. Uh, the war in Europe, at least. In Australia, New Zealand, you're kind of stuck over here. You can't really send troops. I mean, you can, but then you, you're at risk of invasion. From the Japanese the Raj I don't know it just doesn't seem I don't know I don't it's uh, being a colony or well, yeah is that what it is it's a colony I don't know uh, it just seems I don't know not exactly interested in it and then South Africa like if you stick with the Allies like I mean that actually wouldn't be the worst one because then you could send your troops up from here come through Italy and all that but so the main reason for not South Africa is I've watched one of those Let's Plays, and I haven't seen any Canadian ones yet. I'm sure they're out there. It's just none of the guys that I watch are out there. So we do have a Great Depression and a uh, conscription crisis among French Canadians. So, okay, so we're just going to leave this regular. We're not going to boost or lower anyone. No Iron Man, no... Historically, I focus is... I think the game is more fun with that off. So let's, let's jump right in. Um... And let's start off looking at the National Focus Tree. There's a lot of cool stuff here. Um, one thing that is kind of tough, though, is you have to um, either commit to... You can either remove Great Depression or remove the Manpower Hindrance. You can only do one. You can't do both. So that's... Um, it's kind of down the line, but it's an unfortunate uh, situation. And then, we, you know, we got Army Text right here. And then down this way, we have um, our options government-wise. So basically, this one, these right here, and I guess, uh, yeah, no, you don't need all of them for this. But with, so like this, kind of these two lines right here, these are stay democratic and stay in the commonwealth. This one right here, which I'm tempted by, but I'll tell you why I'm not going to do it is democratic and form an alliance with the Americans. Now, Australia has something very similar to this, a Pacific Alliance Pact or whatever, but the reason I'm not gonna do this is because I wanna get involved in the war in Europe without building a navy, and unless we had boots on the ground, the AI is not gonna end the war for us. Um, however, the Habakkuk carrier is awesome. For those of you who don't know what that is, I'll kind of, I th I'll put a link in the description. Actually, let me write that down. Uh, Habakkuk carrier and description yeah I'm just writing that down um, it's basically there was like a history channel or a discovery channel documentary about this or that included this it was basically the Canadians and the Americans like okay 
let's take an iceberg and put a runway on it and float it around the North Atlantic. So, like, um, it's a material called pycrete. It's like wood chips and, like, sawdust mixed with ice makes, like, a much stronger ice or whatever. And they want to build a carrier on it big enough. Like, uh, there's just a... I mean, I just have it all open on my other monitor on Google Image. It's, like massive like extremely big like there's battleship turrets on each side of it like it's pictured right next to a battleship like i don't know in iowa or uh, one of the british classes with a quad turret and it um i can't rec figure out which one it is it, uh i don't know i don't know which battleship it is but it's just insane like it can launch strategic bombers like lancasters and uh b-29s and all that sort of thing so that was the idea but anyway that's enough about the Habakkuk carrier um this one is you go fascist and this you can uh basically go turn mexico fascist and take over america and then this one you just join the axis and you can do both these from either one then there is the communist burn royal portraits where you can either join the common turn or make your own communist faction. Uh, what does this do? Um, this adds forts. Yeah, so this one, I don't know. Uh, okay, so the, yeah, this just is just Canada's own um, uh, communist faction. This one's with the communists. Now, this one, RCF, Raging Cajun Athletic Foundation. No, that's not what it stands for. I know it's. Royal Canadian Air Force, but um, I'm from Lafayette, UL Lafayette. The C stickers RCAF uh, for the Raging Cajun Athletic Foundation to support that. So I yeah, just chuckle when I saw that. But you know, this is your um, basic air and naval uh, ones. So I'm going to let's see, what do we want to do? Army experience and land auction boost um, gives us a captain of industry. I do like that. Uh, some political power. Maybe we'll just do the political power. Commonwealth ties. I'm going to go down this one, but I'm going to wait. If anyone vehemently opposes that in the comments um, for the first episode, I will honor that. So uh, we're going to go with political power. Now, let's, let's see. What do we have army-wise? Uh, let's just... Okay, so we have not that much. I want to select all of them. So let's... You know, this is going to be a bit tedious, but... Okay, so we have 13 divisions. Okay, let's um figure out what we're doing here. Let's just put you guys here and just train up and we'll give you... Uh, what does this guy have? We'll give you... Uh, we'll give you Bert. Good old Bert. Um, civilian factories. Now, how's our navy? How many ships do we have? We have two destroyers not quite what I wanted and we don't have that we have we had 24 naval bombers um wait what seriously where'd they go okay so we don't have that uh where how, what do we have we have 24 swordfish in reserve so we need to pick air force or navy um ooh, that is a bit tough although we do only have one naval dockyard um, I think we're gonna, mm, I don't know, um, and let's put these all into, uh, let's, do we have any artillery? Okay, so let's take that off, actually, and let's start building support equipment and artillery. There we go. Um, and, yeah, so, because I do want to add those to the divisions eventually. Um, let's go back into... What do, we, what do we need resources? We need a little bit of everything. That is fine. Low manpower. 14,000. That, that is not a lot. That really isn't. Okay. Um, now, we do have a lot of... Um, we How many civilian factories do we have? We have 13. So let's build... Let's build another civilian factory. Oh my god, that's going to take forever. Let's build two. So we're going to build two civilian factories... Um, just to start off with and we'll do the usual shebang of electronics research and actually I want to see what's boosted like can we get anything easily like okay so we can get the truck um, 
none of these uh, I do want to get into the text sharing um, anti-air uh, I think we're gonna be stuck in this land auction since the boosts are gonna be too good to pass up um, we could get maybe we should go with submarines I don't know uh, ooh no I think we need close no that's close air support though would like the hurricane I'm just looking at our options okay so let's um let's go with the usuals of the construction and the production and let's get started so we're going to get uh, put things up to speed for like we normally do and let's give them they need to be red our red armies always do well I mean I kind of do make them the best one but the red aces are always the best so that is uh, what we're gonna do so yeah we just have to see what happens um, we're not gonna train up any new divisions we're just gonna keep things the way they are what is um although we might edit their templates How, what are their templates okay this isn't terrible what about armored division okay yeah that is kind of a poor man's um, tank division and the cavalry cavalry militia okay so that's that we're probably gonna have the cavalry on the Pacific coast just in case a Japanese invasion happens I highly doubt it like why would you invade this part of Canada like invade California it's nicer weather there all that sort of thing and our two um, well we have four naval commanders but we have two destroyers okay so that is interesting to say the least um, what are our laws at? we're already at volunteer army we're not even at um, disarmed nation but our manpower is um, yeah it is dropped by 30 percent because of the conscript conscription crisis among French Canadians so yeah that's going on there uh, we do have our allies the British and we do have autonomy we need to look at let's look at our um, so we are a Dominion how is this changing it's not I do want to go to free I do want to go to free so we do that by Lin leasing oh we can't do a Lin lease because um, we need world tension to be at 50% okay that's under completely understandable um, but yeah, as far as production goes we don't have anything <laughs> we need we need steel but I mean we don't have enough we barely have any civilian factories it's all in consumer goods like it's just not it's not good um, so how much of a hit are we taking to our production efficiency there 90% um, because of lack of resources so that is um, we don't even have let's move the light tanks down because we need um, all this a whole lot more so I like also like how they have the unique names and looks for the vehicles and all that so all this is pretty cool I, I do enjoy some of this um, how's our training going our training is doing quite all right um, so we have one two three four five cavalry divisions those will be on the Pacific uh, or maybe those will just guard all our ports yeah maybe we'll just have you know those there and here in Nova Scotia and New Brunswick yeah and well is this okay this is part of Quebec but in these states yeah so could yeah so uh, where are the resources exactly is there any reason to have this or yeah no so the aluminum's elsewhere in Quebec so yeah we don't need to worry about this nor would the AI ever invade that all right, so we got some political power. Um, I do want to go down army modernization. That would give us some army experience. Um, I think we should. We do need uh, to get more technology. So going down this as soon as possible would be helpful. But like I said, I want to wait for your input. So we'll go with this guy, um, uh, the captain of industry or whatever. Um, as far as all of this goes, Quartermaster General would be interesting. Same ideology, monthly opinion. I think we might go with the Silent Workhorse. 
Um, yeah, that's what we're going to go with because <laughs> Ooh, we could boost our national unity with one of these guys. That's pretty cool. Uh, I like this, how you can get support units boosted. Maybe we want to go with a ooh, we can get a nuclear scientist. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, maybe we go with the army experience. It is good to get what the first ones you want to get are either a silent workhorse because it gives you political power gain. So he takes a while to pay for himself, which is we're gonna get him. Um, because yeah, that's exactly why because he takes so long to pay for himself. Um, and then there is. Uh, what what else is it called? The um, your theorist. You want your theorist because you want to boost your army experience um, because that's how you change your divisions and you know your divisions are crap to start off with. Usually they're usually not that great, that's for sure. So there we go. We're just cruising along at speed four. Um, you know we can even go speed five. Try and get through the first year or as quickly as possible. So we got electromechanical engineering. Um, got a 10% boost there. Uh, I do want to, I want the hurricane. I do want fighters. We're probably gonna focus on fighters and naval bombers. Navy, I, I just don't see us looking too much at. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at what else anyone else got. Is there a national focus for trucks? I think there is, there usually is. Yes, there is. Okay, so. 75% research bonus. Okay, so we're gonna save that for that one. Um, you know what? Let's go with we. Yeah, let's go with the. Um, actually, no. Yeah, we need to go with more. Uh, let's go with this one. Get our research time down, even though it's not boosted through uh, faction research sharing. So we're going to just put you in your own little division right here. And, yep, just start moving, y'all. Okay, hold up. So the infantry are all good to go. So yeah, actually, we're gonna move, we're gonna assign you this guy. Um, y'all get Brent, and y'all, I, I really should have just, you know, just you go yellow, and you go to the red ace that I want. And I want all of y'all to, um, is this support? Okay, yeah, I want all of y'all to go to Halifax. Because we're going to send you to Europe. We know there's going to be a war there. So, let's send them now. National Spain declared war on Republican Spain. There's a Spanish Civil War going on. There usually is. I mean, it's kind of, you know, one of their things. So we're going to send you into Bristol, um, and that is where you will start your war. Okay, so cavalry are almost done. I think we just give it a few more moments. Um, yeah, so we're just going to, we're actually just going to give you your orders now. So let's go here, here. Is there a port in Quebec? I don't really care if there is one, because it's not really relevant. Um, and there you go, and I just want y'all to guard ports. There you go. You need six, and you have five. Okay, so that there's that, and um, that is the end of the episode. So we're gonna get started. We're playing as, we're gonna get the campaign started. We're sending our soldiers, which are almost already across the Atlantic, probably because we're going so fast. We're gonna put them in, um, in the UK, hoping, hoping that we can help the French out a little bit. Um, we're gonna, you know, probably just, we're gonna hold Dunkirk, that's what we're gonna do. And maybe we'll get stuck at Dunkirk, like happen, what happened historically. But that's what we're doing. We're playing as historical-ish Canada, and that is our next Hearts of Fire and Four campaign. So, hope you enjoy this episode. Hope you're gonna like this series. Please, 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 comment and like on this video specifically i mean it helps on all of them but it matters the most on the first video because search engine optimization and all that so um if you know if you can take your time out and do that i would greatly appreciate it anyways that is all for this episode until the next one this is banzader signing out later y'all